Hey everyone, welcome to the 2017 Science News Year in Review. Now you might be thinking, it's 2021, dude. You're a few years late. Yeah, okay, I get it, I get it. But my wife gave me the idea to do a year-end review in late 2018. And until now, I had never gotten around to making a belated 2017 review. Try and mentally transport yourself back to 2017, to that strange time where all of these news stories were actually news. Uh, Alright, so let's look at some of the science news stories uh, that I covered in 2017. And then at the end, I'll choose some of the best stories. And by best, I mean the stories that I thought were the most interesting, or had the biggest impact on society, or have the most significant implications. Without further ado, let's start with some new discoveries in the animal realm. Scientists have noted that female dragonflies will fake their own death to make obnoxious males go away and stop bothering them. Another study found a series of amazing previously unknown adaptations within the wings of dragonflies, including respiratory structures. It was discovered that waxworms can eat and fully digest some types of plastic. A species of snake was observed to be hunting in packs, which is super unusual for snakes. A study explored the terrible and destructive effect of insecticides on honeybee hives. A study on whales and dolphins found they have complex societies with complex social relationships and social networks, which the researchers described as human-like. A Greenland shark was estimated to be the oldest living vertebrate, with with an approximate age of over three centuries. There's a new fungal disease uh, having an outbreak among snakes, and the parasitic fungus that zombifies its insect hosts has had its mechanism of action studied in detail for the first time. A study found that birds are nesting earlier because of climate change, and another study found the totally unsurprising facts that poaching and unregulated trophy hunting raises the extinction risk for megafauna. And in a more general sense, Human-generated light pollution is wreaking havoc on our ecosystems. In the study of evolution and evolutionary history, scientists believe they've identified the oldest evidence of life. An interdisciplinary study with biologists and geologists found that the data syncs up and provides a consistent date for the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea. A new microimaging technology opens up new frontiers in photographing insects. A brutal, fearsome-looking insect preserved from the Cretaceous period is nicknamed the Hell Ant. Also preserved in amber was the tail section of a dinosaur that happened to be shrouded in feathers, with a parasitic tick hanging on. The world's longest set of dinosaur tracks was discovered in France. Giant penguin fossils were found in New Zealand. Birds in the United Kingdom have been seen to be evolving longer beaks, to better interact with the heavily developed, often urban, environment. In the warming waters of the Persian Gulf, corals and algae are slowly adapting to the higher temperatures. And the Galapagos finches were calculated to be undergoing a very high rate of speciation. New things were also learned about human evolution, including evidence suggesting humans came to North America 100,000 years earlier than previously thought. A study found that in the modern day, in the last 40 years actually, men's average sperm count has dropped by half. There is a study that suggested that increasing prevalence of C-sections may actually be affecting human evolution by removing a barrier to larger infant head size. And this is really interesting because if you remove this constraint on head size, humans might develop, you know, the, the traits for larger heads might survive more in the population. And so this could be an an example of technology-induced human evolution. Transitioning now to the field of healthcare and medicine, there was some research that uh, found that up to 60% of cancers may be completely unavoidable, despite lifestyle and environmental risks. A new process for regrowing bone was explored. A new treatment process was able to stop a dangerous form of breast cancer in less than two weeks, so that's pretty amazing. An experiment transformed a spinach leaf into human vasculature right down to the cellular level, 
and new kinds of prosthetics are inspired by the uh, polymer compounds in squid beaks. A patient who underwent a double hand transplant has had significant remapping of their brain structure. A new way to create artificial heart tissue has been developed, and a breakthrough treatment for Huntington's disease is also being developed. The technology behind bionic retinas is improving. A health study found that obesity and diabetes are linked to certain uh, symptomatic brain abnormalities. There was a breakthrough in understanding the protein buildup in the brain of Alzheimer's. Third trimester fetuses were shown to respond to face-like stimuli, providing more evidence that the ability to recognize the basic structure of the face is embedded in our neurophysiology. And childhood consumption of Ritalin has been linked to altered neurotransmission in adulthood. A study found that breastfeeding for at least two months could reduce the risk of SIDS. And playing Super Mario 64 was shown to stimulate the, the regrowth of gray matter in adults. Fungi produce airborne toxins that, that can become concentrated in indoor places, like office buildings or uh, homes, and this can pose a serious health risk. A new gene transfer technique has shown promise in treating diabetes. A new chemical synthesis technique can print biomolecules, which will be useful in drug manufacturing. The chemicals in tattoo ink were observed to sink through the epidermis, through the skin, to the point where they would stain the lymph nodes. Multiple separate studies found that too much sitting is actually just as bad as smoking, and too much time standing can increase your risk of heart disease. So there's no right thing to do. I guess, I guess the best thing you can do regarding sitting and standing, uh, like at work, is try not to go long stretches doing either. You know, keep moving, keep walking around. Um, sit or stand for short, brief periods of time. I know that's tricky, but we didn't evolve to be cramped into cubicles. We didn't evolve to work eight-hour shifts in a factory. So that's a problem with modern civilization. Anyway, a study found that depression is associated with a higher risk of premature death. But this might be countered by having a dog, as another study found that dogs can help people with HIV live longer. There's an outbreak of bubonic plague in Madagascar, which would later spread to Kenya and Tanzania. Bird flu H7N9 is evolving to be more pathogenic. The CDC is reporting on a rising epidemic of suicides in rural areas, many of them categorized as deaths of despair, and researchers have identified drug-resistant superbug strains of gonorrhea, bubonic plague, and malaria, leading them to announce an antibiotic apocalypse. To hear these big words in 2017 and then to look back at it after the 2020-2021, the you know, pandemic, it hits different. You know, it's, uh, it's weird. It seems like a lot of bad stuff's going down in the world all at once. Like, it's all getting worse all at the same time. Kind of dark. Kind of bleak. But there's things to be uh, optimistic about. There's good stuff, too. Uh, for example, ongoing research into various recreational drugs generated empirical data that access to medical marijuana is associated with reductions in opioid use. Uh, so patients are choosing a safer drug over a more uh, habit-forming, more dangerous drug. That's, that's amazing. That's really good news. Another study found that psilocybin is really good at treating the symptoms of anxiety, depression, and addiction, even in treatment-resistant cases. This has been so good that the FDA has had an internal revolution on drugs and uh, has approved MDMA, or ecstasy, as a breakthrough therapy for treatment-resistant PTSD, and uh, PTSD generally. In the political and economic spheres, the potentially lucrative golden rice is being developed for future commercial market access. Scientists want a ban on glitter due to the fact that it's super dangerous for animals, it's super easy to pollute with, and it's totally pointless and unnecessary. Research exposed the alcohol industry for deceiving customers about the health risks of their product. 193 countries signed a UN resolution to limit, reduce, and ideally eliminate ocean plastic pollution. A study conducted in 2015, but published in 2017, found that there was, uh, in 2015, pollution was linked to 9 million deaths. The air quality in the United Kingdom was found to be dangerously polluted. Shutting down coal-fired power plants was found to improve the health and neural development of fetuses, newborns, and young children in nearby downwind neighborhoods. 
and medical data showed that exposure to debris from the tower collapse on 9-11 was linked to early-onset cardiometabolic diseases. The U.S.-supported Saudi war in Yemen is creating a humanitarian disaster, including an illegal blockade on medicine that's letting a massive cholera outbreak go untreated. Transitioning from the Earth to outer space, out in the cosmos, we've identified hydrogen gas in the erupting geyser plumes of Enceladus. And that's exciting, because on Earth, hydrogen gas is found in deep-sea hydrothermal vents, where it feeds a plethora of extremophile life. This is a tantalizing hint that similar life forms could exist on Enceladus. This tantalizing hint is reinforced by other studies that analyze the activity of hydrogen volcanoes on Enceladus. Another study that discussed the anomalous heat signatures in the southern regions of Enceladus. And yet another study about Enceladus found that its subsurface oceans may be old enough to host a well-evolved lineage of life forms. NASA experimented with a directed evolution chamber to breed microbes that could theoretically survive on Mars. A study found that earthworms can successfully reproduce in not Mars-identical, but Mars-like soils, and another NASA experiment looked at changes in the blood and vascular system during long space missions. A Japanese satellite identified a lunar cave, a lava tube, I believe, that was suitable enough to be colonized. You know, you could, you could uh, build a habitat in there and have people live in there, shielded by the surface soil from radiation. Deeper in the cosmos, scientists described the multiple rocky planets of the TRAPPIST-1 star system. Researchers calculated that the X-ray and UV exposure from red dwarf stars may not be so prohibitive of life on an orbiting planet, depending on that planet's atmosphere. Scientists identified 20 exoplanets that are potentially habitable, and the mysterious Oumuamua, an unusually shaped asteroid-like object, came from deep space, out of the solar system, into our solar system to say hi, before turning around and speeding away back into the void. In the ranking of this year's news stories, I'm going to give the honorable mention for 2017 to Japan searching for lava tubes that might be suitable for future human habitation. This is pretty wild, because lava tubes may be ideal places to build habitats on the moon. As the moon has no atmosphere, it's not protected from solar radiation. Building shelters underground mitigates this problem, at least to a degree. This is an honorable mention because it's super cool, and the potential ramifications, should this lava tube be exploited to build a habitat, are incredible. But this is literally just step one. You know, in fact, it's step zero. This is still research and development. So it's fun to think about what could come of this, but that's about as far as we've gotten at this point. I'll try to stay updated on this to, to see what comes of it in the future, because you never know. It's entirely possible that Japan builds a sustainable lunar colony in this lava tube sometime in the 2030s or 2040s. You know, I mean, you never know. Now, to the actual rankings. In third place, I choose the Amuamua story. It was an incredibly fascinating event watching as this super weird object came tumbling into our solar system from somewhere beyond. It was a long, narrow, rod-like asteroid that exhibited non-gravitational acceleration, despite not releasing gas or vapor like a comet being warmed by the sun. All of these super unusual qualities inspired serious discussions about the potentially alien-crafted nature of Oumuamua. Indeed, I remember back in 2017 and 2018, before the complete data analyses had been published, thinking how absolutely wild and paradigm-shattering it would be if Amuamua was some kind of cylindrical alien spacecraft, derelict and tumbling through space, coated in a crusty layer of ice and dust, but with a hollow interior hosting the vacuum-preserved bodies of an alien crew. But in the end, it was determined to be a, just a strange asteroid from out of the solar system. It wasn't aliens, but it was evidence for the feasibility of rocks acting as vehicles for interstellar panspermia. So it's still interesting enough to earn the number three place. In second place, I'm going to have to go with the waxworms eating plastic. This finding is really wild 
because it's evidence of a living metabolic system that can sufficiently degrade plastics. A problem with conventional plastic biodegradation is that the plastic polymers are often just broke up into smaller plastic chunks, and they retain many of their harmful properties, such as the ability to electrostatically aggregate metal ions that stick to the plastic and that can get ingested or absorbed into living tissue. For this reason, being able to fully metabolize plastic, breaking the polymers down completely, and integrating the elemental nutrients, the, the carbon and the, the nitrogen and the oxygen, uh, into living tissues, leaving behind no residual microplastics at all, that's an incredible thing. We can now use these wax worms to manually break down plastic, and we can also study their metabolism to find out which acids and enzymes are at work here. And then we might be able to recreate this process in the lab and develop scalable ways to completely recycle plastics. There's a lot of good that can potentially come from this finding, including theoretical solutions to the microplastics problem. And finally, my pick for the first place biologic news story of 2017 is the research on men's average sperm levels dropping rapidly. This is a hugely concerning trend, and all the evidence I've seen suggests the problem is originating from environmental saturation of endocrine-disrupting chemicals. Perhaps the most well-known among them are the phthalates and the bisphenols, specifically bisphenol A, or BPA, which is an additive introduced to plastic mixtures to make the final material, the final plastic product, uh, more flexible. The problem with BPA is that it can leach out of the plastic and into the food or water held within, especially when the container is heated, like in a microwave, or when a water bottle sits in the sunlight. BPA is then ingested and begins to interfere with the organism's endocrine system. BPA is a xenoestrogen because it mimics the effects of estrogen. It's shaped like estrogen, and so it can react with a, a similar suite of receptors, and this allows it to alter the organism's hormone profile. Due to the signaling mechanism of hormones, even a small change in hormone activity can have numerous downstream consequences all over the body, both subtle and apparent. Other bisphenols, like S and F, have been advertised as safer, but these claims have been met with broad skepticism. Now it gets really concerning when you realize that these endocrine-disrupting chemicals are everywhere in the modern world. They're in receipt paper, CDs and DVDs, baby bottles, epoxy resins lining the inside of water pipes and soda cans, even in the fire-retardant chemicals in, uh, in carpeting and furniture and office textiles. With such rapid buildup of xenoestrogens in our environment, we should reasonably expect this to have an effect on humans, and this study, showing a 50% decrease in sperm count and decrease in sperm quality, is a clarion call that should bring serious, institutional attention to this public health issue. If you want to learn more about this, you should look up the work by Dr. Shauna H. Swan, particularly her book Countdown, How Our Modern World is Threatening Sperm Counts, Altering Male and Female Reproductive Development, and imperiling the future of the human race. This is right alongside COVID, honestly, as one of the biggest public health concerns. You know, COVID is a, a more immediate pandemic emergency. Environmental contamination with endocrine disrupting chemicals is more of a, a slow rolling disaster that's been uh, progressing and affecting us more and more over the last, uh, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 years. Uh, whenever plastics uh, with BPA and chemicals like this started to get uh, commercially produced and distributed around the world. All right, everyone. So that's our review of the science news from 2017. This has been an interesting look back four years in time, and maybe it puts science developments today in a more informed, historically refreshed perspective. <laughs>